What's good, wave enthusiasts? No, we're not talking surfing. We're talking Transformers. As normal. This particular one is a wave. A sound wave. From the Studio Series Bumblebee toy line. There's the box. And a nice picture of sound wave. He is number 83. Not, eh, I want to make a joke about 84, 1984, and blah, blah, blah. There's a picture of Soundway. For some reason, not a bot logo. They couldn't change that to Decepticon logo, I guess. With the same picture of Soundwave. Obviously, it's from the uh, Cybertron scene in the movie, so they got to put the movie logo. And on the back, we're just gonna we're just gonna ignore that. <laughs> Pretend like you didn't see it. So yes, we have a Voyager class sound wave, and he is very nice. I really like this robot mode. Nice and beefy, definitely strong looking coming from. Soundwave, who you don't think about those things as if you know, as descriptors for Soundwave. You know, he's normally not supposed to be the beefcake of the Decepticons. <laughs> he's just the uh, communications guy, you know, kind of thing. But yes, they gave him a very nice overhaul for the movie for that one scene. And let's get a full-on look at him. Very nice sort of modern take on his old G1 robot mode. For a comparison, here we have the Siege Anniversary, whatever you want to call them, Sound Blaster. So you can see just how more muscular the Bumblebee movie one is compared to the more standard Classic, sleek sound wave, or sleek wave, if you feel like it. I'll bring, I'll, nah, nah, he fell over. I'll bring him back later, because <laughs> I have the sound wave, the regular seed sound wave on my table, and I don't feel like going to get him. But, uh, yeah. Let's take a look at the head. Very nice head. <laughs> Take that out of context. Um, yeah, that class again, classic head, but with uh, slightly updated movie stylings with tons of detail. Not so much that like overwhelms the design, but like <laughs> just enough detail on pretty much all of his bits to just. Constantly look at him and then notice more. Um, I have a slight nitpick with the head. Uh, actually, two slight nitpicks. His his eyes, or I guess his visor, eyes or visor. Um, it makes him look very sad. Uh, sound wave. Sound wave. Come on, you're a voice in my head. Don't ignore me. Uh, come back to him later. But, um, yeah, what I think the problem is, or I know the problem is, is there's too much red paint. So I want to bring back the, the box art. So you see that little sort of ridge section in the middle of his eyes? That makes him like have very convincing, like angry eyes. They they painted over that on the toy. Like there's too much paint, and you you can't see the uh, the ridges there that would separate his eyes to make him you know look angry as he should. He's a Decepticon. 
So that's one nitpick I have. The other nitpick is with the light piping. I mean, very nice to actually have light piping. Like, more of that, please. It's so rare nowadays, it's like almost... Like, oh. It's almost non-existent. But the problem is actually with the light... Oh, God. Uh, no. The light piping itself. See, uh, see if you can see without me blinding you. But the the light piping is barely there. Like it's non-existent behind the red eyes. It's like barely lights the bottom of his eyes. Which is unfortunate. I would have much preferred, you know, like the best light piping, one of the best light pipings they gave us in years for either this guy's red or his regular one's uh, yellow. Like, just give us red light piping. Well, the, eh, some people pr don't like light piping over painted eyes. I can kind of understand that. But when there's too much paint, mm, I don't know. Uh, what else? I like the colors. I like the choice of the the nice deep blue with the bright white. Very nice contrast. Very clean looking, with the little hints of red and yellow, and some skeletal dark gray. You know, very nice look to it. And, uh, hmm. <laughs> I keep bringing up his, cr I keep getting close in on his crotch because, like, it's very, again, near to Soundwave's classic design of, like, the uh, sort of play and pause on his crotch. Like, you know, you know, to hint that he's a tape recorder. But, like, here, it kind of doesn't look like anything. It's just, um, Kind of mess of detail and silver with some vaguely discernible red arrows, which isn't bad. I I, I get why they kind of had to redo it, like. But I also kind of wish it was connected to his actual crotch instead of just a panel. But, oh well. He also appears to have two. Uh, disinterested faces on his knees. I like to call them Frenzy and Rumble. Which one's which? Ooh. I have similar scarring on my knees from 10 years of martial arts. <laughs> 10 plus years. So. <laughs> and some classic sound wave detailing on his shins. For the back of them, very clean, very little amount of kibble. The only thing you could refer to as kibble is sort of this panel. But even then, barely, and like you can fold it down to its vehicle mode, vehicle mode position to clean up the back even more. And just leave it up there because there's real no point. It's it's barely any it's barely anything. And, yeah, a very nice, very clean robot mode. I, I'm very, very happy with this robot mode. So, articulation-wise, his head is on a ball joint. Get full 360, up, it, up that much, down that far. The shoulders are another tiny nitpick I have with just the way they're jointed. You do get an outward, but I wish it was here under the shoulder pad as opposed to, like, right here. Because the forward motion is under the shoulder pad. Or, if you prefer, you can rotate the full thing. It's just, he looks too much like he's shrugging. He reminds me too much of my brother. <laughs> just, you ask him anything, he's just, no, no, no. 
That, that was like his default. Uh, Zach, if you're watching this, I doubt you ever will, but when he was growing up, just anyone asked him anything at all, what do you want? I don't know. It's perma shrug. And I, I do like a bit that the uh, shoulder pad sort of folds out in places, which is more for the transformation, but yeah. Uh, you do get a bicep swivel, a deep elbow bend beyond 90 degrees, and nothing at the wrist, unfortunately. There's a transformation joint, but oh well. Uh, waist is below the panel, so you can get full, full 360. Hips can go forwards, then go back that far. You get a beautiful spread, a thigh swivel, which reveals the you know, kind of skeletal. I want to say skeletal, but I, I really like the fact that the thighs are sort of squared off. It's a, it's a unique look. And it kind of makes me think like he's just wearing the white and blue as armor. But, yeah, thigh swivel. You do get a double jointed knee for well beyond 90 degrees. You can go freaking all the way up like that. And R Rumble and Frenzy each can go like that. And the feet are probably the best feet I've seen on a robot in quite a while. You do have a pivot up and down, or a hinge, excuse me. A pivot in, which is just bananas, and bananas is good. You have a full, full rotation, and the feet even actually look like feet, not just made out of a chunk of a car. Drag strip. I've had this guy for so long, I've been putting off the reviews. <laughs> but, yeah. Articulation, very, very good. Kind of almost everything you expect. I wish there was a wrist. Because they have to fold in for transformation. But like that's the only joint I feel like I'm missing. Like I prefer I would prefer if the sh shoulder if the outward swing was in a different spot, but it's not a deal breaker. The wrist is almost a deal breaker. But everything else is so good that it kind of makes up for it. Now he is only a communications officer, so he, I, I imagine he would prefer to not have to fight. But instead of fighting, he, he has his classic gimmick of uh, a thing folding out of his chest. So we've talked about this guy earlier, previously. This is uh, Ravage. If you want to know more about him, I'm, I just suggest go watching my review of Studio Series Ravage, which I'll probably put a link to. But yeah, he has that feature. I do kind of wish that he had a purple Decepticon insignia as opposed to the movie's sort of gray one. I think that little bit of purple would pop much better than the kind of dull gray. But he does have actual weapons if he needs to fight. So first off, we have this kind of generic but very nice looking rifle. I find it hilarious that it's, uh, I guess, molded in blue and then completely painted in gunmetal gray. Uh, you know, it has a nice amount of detail. It looks Vaguely rifle-ish. You can plug it into his hand, but like, come on, this isn't this this doesn't go with Soundwave. Like, we everyone knows Soundwave. He's a pop culture icon at this point. And a generic rifle that doesn't suit Soundwave. What does suit Soundwave a bit more is this version of his classic gun with a silver painted barrel. Bit of red. Yep. 
and you can plug it into a port that's either on his back, on the bottom of his arm, for some reason, if you want him to under sling it, which I don't like for Soundwave. But to, you could plug it in, say, like this. And if you want him to rotate it forward, you just kind of have to lift the back plate up and watch Ravage fall out the back. Or, the preferable way, rotate that down. And now you have a peg on a hinge. So you can get that classic, iconic uh, sound wave shoulder blaster. That looks really good. But if you want to take it even farther, you can take the one piece you couldn't shove in his chest with Ravage and plug that into the barrel. And that actually doesn't look very good because the, gu the gun with this tip is supposed to be Se Soundwave's handheld gun. Like this one. And, oh, it's supposed to be up. All right, let's do it properly. Like, see? The shoulder-mounted gun is not supposed to have the extra long barrel or not a uh, tip, whatever, silencer, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to keep it on there, but just know in my heart that it's a little bit wrong because he can't really hold it in his hand. There's nowhere else to, uh, I guess you might be able to plug it into his ass. There. Oh, that's inappropriate. Oh, God. Nope, we're going to ignore that. <laughs> oh, game. Oh. Oh, my. Anyway, robot mode. Very nearly perfect. I have a couple, as I mentioned, a couple minor, minor flaws that I think would be... Hmm. I don't know. I just... I enjoy this guy. I think just the fun factor kind of mitigates the problems to a certain extent. I can understand. I don't think they would be a deal breaker for anybody, but I can understand if, you know, somebody might want to wait on a different version of this toy. But that's it. That's Soundwave. Yep. That's everything. Nothing else to talk about. Nothing at You want me to talk about the vehicle? Fine. I'll be right back after... Hmm. I have to... Mm, tape record... Uh, I don't have a tape recorder joke for... Be, be right back. So I'm just going <laughs> to... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to transform this guy off screen. I'll be right back. I forgot to do a comparison I wanted to. The only other Bumblebee movie Decepticon I have. Star Blitzwing. It's Star Blitzwing. Yeah. I don't have any of the Cybertronian Seekers. Although I do kind of want to get Thrust. But let's transform this guy. So rotate the head. Come to the arms. Fold the hands in. Fold the shoulder pad up. Fold this side up. You don't want to go that way. Because there's a little hooks right there that are going to hook, or they're little tabs, they're going to tab into the shoulders. So you want to do that and just push it in until it locks. Fold the arm until it's, uh, we'll tab it in for right now. You'll see what I mean in a bit, but basically that's the position you want the arm. 
Do the same thing. Fold, fold, rotate, and make sure it tabs in. And the arm might tab in. Come on. There you go. So then you can come to this panel, hold this down, rotate this panel, rotate that again, make sure that looks like that to form the cockpit, so to speak. You want to rotate the legs, come to his shins, fold out these back panels. And then we're going to collapse the legs all the way up. At the same time, this foot is going to go like that. So, uh, it's a little bit, tiny bit awkward. We see collapse this all the way up. Fold this little piece in, and then the foot is going to want to tab, hopefully, into that tab right there on the arm. But, as we'll see, you can't have both tabbed in. Either the foot's tabbed into the arm, or the arm's tabbed into the chest. I don't know if that's a problem on every copy of this toy, but on mine, the, the, there's too much... Uh, tension built up and the tab just pops out. So do the same thing with the other leg. Fold that like that. Fold that in. And basically tab these pieces in and tab the foot in as best you can. And there, you have a collapsed handful of bullshit. I mean, sound waves alt mode. And I think I mentioned it in the video when I, uh, so long ago, like, at first I didn't like this alt mode, because it's ostensibly a spaceship that's a flying pancake. But as time goes on and I've Mess with it enough. I've grown to actually kind of like it. I think it's funny. Because <laughs> the best way it was first described was a groin tank. like, Or I guess a groin spaceship. But when you see how it actually transforms, which is both easier than people say it is and honestly a bit more fiddly than I think it needs to be. Like... That's not actually the crotch. His crotch is all the way back here. It's he, He's attacking with his ass. With a variable mandibles for, I guess, impaling. So this mode... Um, hello. Everything's just right there it's hard to call it kibble kibbly when basically everything's kibble like literally there's no part of it that isn't kibble so that's unfortunate but that's also kind of endearing because it's cybertronian and the thing about the Bumblebee movies, at least that scene, is n no, almost nobody had alt modes. None of the Autobots were given alt modes. S Soundwave turned into a lamp post. I'm not even kidding. He was a lamp post. Try and turn a robot that looks like that into a lamp post. I don't think Hasbro or Takara could do it. So they had to 
make up an alt mode for this guy. And it does look very similar to one of Soundwave's comic book alt modes. I can't remember which comic off the top of my head. But, you know, there are very clearly inspirations from that. And somebody else, I believe it was Age, good buddy at the Robot Scrapyard who sold this guy to me. Thank you. Uh, do I have his business card on me? It's somewhere. Actually mentioned that it looks like the Tumblr. You know, uh, freaking the Batmobile. Uh, you know, Christopher Nolan's uh, Batmobile. Yeah, the Tumblr. And I can totally see it. The sort of square, over-designed, tiny little cockpit. I can kind of see that. So much so that I, I really want them to do a version of this in this in these colors. Remold it, do whatever, but give it proper wheels and make it cross over as Batmobile. Like, would that would be awesome. Maybe fix some things, adjust some things, but I so want to see this. Like, I think there's potential for this alt mode. But that's also why I brought up this guy, just for that reason. And just to see that yeah, this isn't the only currently available Voyager-esque sound wave that transforms into a handful of bullshit that doesn't really look like anything you'd see on Earth. They're slightly different alt modes, but they're the same idea. The, the Dark Knight... Uh, idea got me thinking. Hey, Soundwave, you there this time? Hey, Soundwave? What? Why so serious? Ugh, I hate you so much. I know. I can't help it, but... Uh, we do have to talk about one unfortunate thing. As a consequence of how the arms... Plug in. I did kind of snap that one. So it's very much an awkward, doesn't fit. But yeah. So anything else we can talk about? We got weapon storage. Yay, weapon storage. Yeah, I did not like that sound. But you can plug both guns. Just uh, you can plug one into the screw holes if you want a vertical. Plug them if you want a semi unit. No, I don't like the look of the rifle plugged into the arm. Because it doesn't go straight at an awkward angle. So that's that's basically it for this for Soundwave. Oh, here's a comparison with Blitz Scream. It's jet mode. So. Overall, I do kind of think I would recommend this figure. The robot mode's great. With minor nitpicks, the alt mode is hilarious. And it's Soundwave. How can you say no to Soundwave? Like, I really do hope that they make more uh, core class accessories for Soundwave outside of, like, I hope they do laser beak. Uh, I think the only laser beak they're doing right now, movie wise, is the Revenge of the Fallen, like two, two minutes of screen time where he pretended to be a pink bumblebee. Because I don't know if I want that, but that's kind of awesome. That he literally. He turned into bumblebee, because apparently he could just do that. 
entered a guy's house and just killed him. That was apparently a scene in a movie. Whether that's Revenge of the Fallen, I think. I don't remember Revenge of the Fallen that well. But I hope they do, like, more compatible with Soundwave. Because I, I have to go back and watch that scene. I don't remember if he had more than just Ravage. But I kind of want to see what they could do with a movie-style rumble or frenzy or a uh, rat bat. You know, all the rest of Soundwave's best friends. And also, I already mentioned the uh, Batmobile and everything. So, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, I guess. Thanks for watching. I don't know what the hell this video became, but I'll find out when I edit it. So until next time, make sure you don't get abducted by the weird flying space crotch. And also, keep it weird. If that wasn't weird enough. Bye-bye. <sighs>